John Longcroft Neil here again today and uh, this is going to replace my usual vlog. Um, this is a sort of a history lesson really. A certain Jim Broom uh, wrote a comment on one of the other vlogs and said he was interested in history. Now I'm not sure Jim whether you are living in Britain or not. I did ask but you haven't got back to me. Probably haven't seen the reply. But uh, if you are in the USA you certainly have a big country but not a very old one. Whereas the UK has got a long and checkered history, which one of the other vlogs talked about the other day, actually. And uh, But the Midlands here, we've got a lot of history knocking around. So I'd like to just skip through over that first and then focus in on the Battle of Bosworth, which is the battle that uh, established Henry Tudor onto the throne uh, back in 1485. Hmm. So it's over five, just over 500 years ago. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the other history uh, events that occur in this area where I live in the middle of England. This is a very quick potted history of the history of the Midlands here. In 500 BC or there around was yeah, the Iron Age and there are a number of Iron Age sites in this area. And we live near one at Hartsell in Nuneaton. And then about 100 AD only, the Romans came over and built various things, including some settlements at Mansetta and the Watling Street, which runs right through the middle of this area. Uh, Queen Boudicca tried to defeat the Romans in 60 AD, but failed. And that was at Mansetta, they think. The Battle of Bosworth, which we're going to talk about in length, is nearby uh, in 1485. Of course, uh, William Shakespeare lived in Stratford, which is uh, over here, ding, uh, in 1600. And Birmingham, jumping forward 200 years in the 1800s thereafter, was very important for the Industrial Revolution. And in 1900, around there, Coventry was important as well for bicycles and cars and motorbikes. In fact, the Triumph motorbike factory is just down the road from us. Uh, in 1940, the jet engine was in, developed for those few years by Sir Frank Whittle, who was from Coventry, and the development took place around in Rugby and Lutworth. I live in Nuneaton, and the Battle of Bosworth site is not far away, so let's have a close look at where it uh, happened. This is the site of the Battle of Bosworth, and it's on the corner of this road and if I step over this big log which is to stop unwanted people getting in here uh, it's just a field as you can see and over there that is the farm which is in the middle of it and over this way is a Roman road I'll be on there soon that comes by and there's the battlefield center proper over there. I say proper, the real site is just here. But yeah. and this is the Roman road and there's a Roman cyclist going along it now. No, but this is the battlefield center over here in the, and that farm apparently is in the middle of it. And that is where they found the various artifacts that make it up to be the real battlefield centre of the Battle of Bosworth. This is the battlefield centre up on Ambien Hill and it's closed now because of the pandemic unfortunately but the car park's open and when it is open properly these flags are up on the top and here's some signs with all the details of the battle which you can pause for a moment and read. Now I met this gentleman up here as well, it gives you some idea of the landscape. You know, it's finally been because it looks like it was going to be him. Yeah. And then they actually rubber stamped it, like right, you know. Oh, well, even the DNA trace was really right on the edges, wasn't it? Of, yeah, yeah. Of who it yeah. was. This gentleman was from Leicester, and uh, he was talking about the fact that uh, the body of Richard the Third, the loser in the battle, had been found in a car park in the middle of Leicester, and the remains were dug up and given a proper burial. And I went to Dadlington, which you'll see later, when they came by with a coffin and indeed some 
knights on horseback, which was fantastic, and they took the remains to Leicester Cathedral. This is the Rose Garden at the battlefield centre, and on the floor is this inscription, among others. The last of the Plantagenet kings slung naked across a horse, a victor, Henry Tudor, leads his tired army to Leicester, and a day's deeds are recounted. The dead king's body is viewed by the masses before the Grey Friars put him to rest. Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond, the victor, and Richard III, the vanquished. There are various information posts around the grounds. This one describes Richard III. Richard III, Richard Plantagenet, Duke of Gloucester, son of Richard of York and the youngest brother of King Edward IV, was a popular Yorkist nobleman. He enjoyed a successful period as Lord of the North and fought alongside his brother at the battles of Barnet and Tewkesbury in 1471. He became king after Edward's death in 1483, but this was not without controversy. The fate of Edward's sons, known as the princes in the tower, who disappeared once he took the throne, is a mystery to this day. Here we have Henry Tudor, the victor in this battle at Bosworth. Henry was a minor Lancastrian nobleman living in exile in France, where he and his uncle had fled after the Yorkist victory at Tewkesbury in 1471. Through his mother, Margaret Beaufort, he was ninth in line to the English throne. He had attempted to take the throne in 1483, before Richard was crowned, but his plan failed, leading to the execution of the Duke of Buckingham, formerly Richard's right-hand man. Let's make our way over to Dadlington, and here's the church where many of the dead from the Battle of Bosworth were buried. This is obviously not the original church, it's been renovated a number of times. This sign at the front of the church indicates that it was dated from the early 12th century, that's 200 years before the Battle of Bosworth. And it says in 1511, King Henry VIII authorised the founding of a chantry chapel here to commemorate the souls of those killed at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, fought in this parish at the Field of Readymore. It so happens that I went to King Henry VIII Grammar School in Coventry, which was also founded in the 1500s. In this place lie the bodies of many who died at the Battle of Bosworth, 22nd of August, 1485. Well, this is the church at Dadlington, where apparently some of the dead from the Battle of Bosworth are buried. So let's have a closer look. Well, I'll just show you some of the surrounding buildings, some cottages here. Most of these are renewed and re renovated, but there's a great big pub, Dog and Hedgehog. Quite a nice place, actually. Lovely view over the back, because we're quite high up, look. All the, the villages along here all seem to be on a bit of a hill. And this is the church i don't know how much of this is actually original maybe some of these corner things are but the whole lot's been rendered and renovated and just to show here the uh, suffering doesn't really ever end is a grave of private walter towers died at luth may the 4th 1917 age 19 so that was in the First World War, 19. I was extremely grateful to this local resident, Carolyn, who lives directly opposite the church, um, and she would no doubt apologise for wearing her gardening clothes, uh, but she gave me a lovely account 
of what she knew of the church and its relationship to the Battle of Bosworth. So what, what is there inside the church? You said that's all right. Uh, there are some, there are some uh, copies of documents that um, are, well, one is uh, from Henry VIII to, to, um, to say mass or to say prayers for the souls of the dead. Right. Specifically yeah. this building. Yeah, and Henry VIII, of course, would have been quite a few years after the yes. battle. Um, Henry the, I mean, it was Henry, uh, Henry, was Henry the seventh. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. his Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wh where are the, the bodies? Are they buried in the churchyard or inside? No, they, they were left, they were outside because obviously after a battle they're unknown, both sides. Yeah. And they're all put in a mass grave, I'd imagine. Yeah. I mean, I don't, the, 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 the yard is very uneven anyway. Yes. Uh, we're not quite sure where, but there's lots of uneven places. This is a telephone box, but it's not, it's got a defibrillator in it. And of course, back in the day, this would have been a telephone box, a public box for people to use. And in England, in particular, they were always this red colour. And it would have said telephone across the top. But now it's a defibrillator. Because everybody's got a phone. Everybody, but everybody has got a phone. Even their cats and dogs have phones. I'm drifting along the road down from Stoke Golding off towards Higham on the Hill and uh, I brought you this way because no traffic on here it will definitely say Welcome to Stoke Golding birthplace of the Tudor dynasty This is one of the many blue plaques in the area and this is in Stoke Golding and it says that the Crown Hill near this spot following the Battle of Bosworth King Henry the seventh was crowned and thus began the Tudor dynasty on the 22nd of August 1485. They're rather fond of making the most of this as you can well imagine so there are even roads named after the event here's Crown Hill Close but one of the funniest I think, is this, which is a well, well, a reconstruction of a well, which they don't even think looked like this. But it says on the plaque next to it that if Richard III had had a drink at a well, it might have looked like this, and it might have been here. So there's so many ifs and buts about this, but they plonked it in the battlefield centre with a plaque next to it, and people like to see it anyway. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching this short presentation about the Battle of Bosworth, brief as it is, and here are some photographs of the area where we love to walk all year round. Thank you, bye-bye.